Hello everyone, I'm Stacy, and this is the For Bricks and Giggles YouTube channel. So I just hit my three year anniversary on YouTube, and so I wanted to do a little bit of reflection over those three years, and also answer the questions you all left for me. I try to answer as many questions as possible in the comments, but as the channel has grown in the last three years, so have the number of comments, so I can't always answer all of those. So I'm excited to get to answer some of those today. I do get a lot of repetitive questions, things like when I got started in Lego, what my favorite set is, what my favorite theme is. A lot of those kind of more generic questions I have answered in past videos, so probably on like my two-year anniversary video or any of the videos listed as answering your question type videos. I would recommend going back and watching those if your question specifically wasn't answered in this one because there's a good chance I have already answered it. So one of the cool things that has happened since last year around this time to this year is I have nearly doubled in subscribers, so a lot of new people in that time. I'm so appreciative of everyone who has been here since the beginning and anyone who is new here. I'm excited to let you into my little world of Lego. Lego has one of the kindest communities I've ever been a part of, and I absolutely love getting to share stuff with you all. Another really cool thing is that around this time last year, my channel hit 100,000 views collectively for everything I had posted, and I was really excited about that. You Know, two years of hard work to get to 100,000 views. A lot of people don't stick it out for that long. And now this year for the month of June, I had 100,000 views in the month of June, as well as 100,000 views in the month of May. So last year I was excited for the whole channel to hit 100,000 views. And then in the last two months, I've had back-to-back -back months of 100,000 views per month. So also super exciting. Never thought I would be seeing any kind of numbers like that, but I am absolutely thrilled and loving sharing all of my Lego build reviews, vlogs, and shorts with you guys. So just a couple of quick updates on that kind of stuff that I was really excited to kind of go back and look and see where things were and what has changed since a year ago this time. So now I'll answer some of your questions. I'm going to go through the questions that were left on YouTube first, and then if there's enough time, I will also go through a couple that I got through Instagram as well. So the first question comes from Swole Bricks. Have you gone to any Lego conventions? If so, which ones? And what was your favorite part about them? I have never been to a Lego convention. I'm really excited to be going to Brick Fair Virginia at the beginning of August. That will be my first Lego convention. So totally new experience. I have never been to any of them. I'm already saving to go to Brick World Chicago next year. I just couldn't make it work for this year, but I have never been to one. First one is coming up soon and I can't cannot wait. This one comes from Matthew Pershing 748. Hopefully I didn't mess that up. Do you think you will ever do vlog day in lifestyle content on your channel? I have considered this. I don't think I have a very aesthetic kind of life. I spend a lot of day sorting Lego in my pajamas or filling orders or washing bulk lots. I don't know that it would be very interesting. It would mostly just be time-lapse kind of stuff. I don't want it to come across as fake. I feel like like some of those kind of vlog style videos where they take you through their day. Obviously those could be totally real, but in my case, I just feel like it wouldn't be enough to want to vlog about it. Because like I said, I do spend most of the day if not my entire day in my pajamas, just doing kind of mundane, repetitive tasks, which I absolutely love, but I just don't think it would be worth watching. I'm not saying it's totally out of the question, and if I do eventually get my student loans paid off and I can move out and have a more, you know, aesthetically pleasing lifestyle kind of channel with less wood paneling, <laughs> then I would totally do that, but I just don't feel like currently the way I run my day-to-day -day is worth doing a, a vlog about. So not presently, but possibly in the future. This question comes from my own channel 92. What were your best bulk lot finds? Sets, single minifigure, or even a single piece? 
for a single piece, my greatest find was the Luke Skywalker Cloud City legs. So they're the like the brown hips with the tan legs that have the pockets on them. I found them in a bulk lot that I paid next to nothing for and I sold them for $225. I've had an unbelievable number of great finds. The original Galaxy Explorer, the Big Rig Truck Stop, the Public Work Center, the Isolation Lockup Base. I've had a lot that most of these were not complete and I had to complete them, but uh, still getting the base amount of parts to be able to complete them, definitely amazing finds. I should write down how many of them actually came from bulk lots because the majority of my vintage collection would probably be bulk lot finds. Just because I don't spend the money to buy sets outright most of the time. Any of the larger vintage sets from the 80s and 90s are ones that I did get in bulk lots, which is awesome. This question comes from Thrill House 4151. Did you play with Duplo when you were little? What's your worst Lego memory? Theirs was either stepping on Rock Raiders HQ base plate or falling knee first on one of the aforementioned Duplo bricks and getting a sweet Duplo stud shaped scar. Ouch. I don't think we had Duplo when I was a kid, at least not at my house. I know I played with Duplo probably at like a preschool or something like that. My worst Lego memory, let's see. I do remember when I was a kid, you know, we had cities and sets set up all over the floor. I had a Belleville set on the floor. I probably had a ton of them, but there was one that had this little, it's like a little cart and it was filled with little one by one round plates had a little shovel you could scoop them into and I accidentally stepped on that. And while it was super painful, I was more concerned that the part cracked when I stepped on it. And this was, I think probably around 2004, 2005, long before I had discovered BrickLink. And so when the part cracked, there was nothing I could do to fix it. And I was absolutely devastated that I had broken this piece. There was another set that actually was also Belleville. It had a little mirror sticker piece and when I went to pull it off of the sticker sheet it tore and again I was absolutely devastated even though you know I applied it to the piece anyways you could tell that it had been ripped also that there was nothing I could do to fix it so both of those were pretty traumatic for me I will say that since that time I have replaced both of those parts I think I actually even bought extras of that sticker sheet so that even though I got a new one and I replaced it and it looks perfect if anything ever happened to it again I would be able to fix it because as a kid that was truly traumatic and now I have tons of extra sticker sheets for different sets I think that messed up something in my brain now where I'm like I need extras of sticker sheets because I may accidentally ruin these I am definitely a perfectionist when it comes to Lego I want to try and get the right part variation for every piece if at all possible everything to be authentic Lego so yeah I think something in there about breaking those parts. They were definitely upsetting days as a kid and I'm happy that BrickLink exists and that I was able to fix both of those parts as an adult. This question comes from Xanderland underscore studios. What are your thoughts on Lego minifigures? Do you prioritize collecting them over builds? I absolutely love Lego minifigures. A lot of times those are what draws me to particular sets, especially because I don't tend to collect full themes. I, I will just be drawn to a set for whatever reason, and a lot of times it is the minifigures. I was particularly into the hidden side minifigures, even though some of the sets were just kind of whatever, they were okay. I did love that theme, but not all of the sets were perfect, but some of them had absolutely fantastic minifigures, so I got the sets because I liked the minifigures. I will say I don't really just collect minifigures. I want the whole set. If I'm gonna do it, I want to go ahead and have the whole set. I don't really just have like a random collection of individual minifigures that belong to sets. I also don't collect a lot of the collectible minifigures. I usually pick a couple that I really enjoy from a series and just get those. I don't get the full series. The only ones I have the full series for are the Harry Potter ones, which until a year or so ago I was trying to get everything Harry Potter Lego related and I've kind of given up on that now. Definitely love minifigures but if I'm gonna do it I'm gonna go ahead and get the whole set and not just have like a collection of individual minifigures. This question comes from Penguin Note 
67 thoughts on the Lego Monster Fighter series from 2012. I really liked that series. It was way too short. 2012, dead middle of college for me, so I really didn't get any of them when they originally came out. I got the Vampire Hearse within the last couple of years. I found it for a good deal. If it had come out like now, I would definitely be buying most, if not all of them. They were great. The minifigures were fantastic. The sets were really cool, unique, one-of-a-kind style sets. So definitely was a fan. I just couldn't afford them when I was in school. Brooks Bricks asks, would you ever see yourself going the route of live streaming, doing your set builds live, doing part sorting, etc.? I have been talking about this. I am considering doing a live. A while ago I had attempted some lives on TikTok. I just really didn't enjoy it a lot. Not a lot of people showed up or they would just stay for a minute or two and then I'm just sitting there staring at a screen and trying to build. I just found it to be very difficult when you're trying to build a set and also read a screen that's, you know, this big. <laughs> that you have to have far enough away from you to be able to see the build, but also close enough to read. I don't know, it w it just felt like a lot to me. So I'm considering doing that again, possibly on YouTube, possibly on TikTok, I'm not sure. I wanna make sure there's like a great enough want for it so that it's not just me awkwardly staring at the camera and not really getting much interaction. I see people do live streams all the time in the Lego community and have, you know, barely any interaction. It just feels like a waste to me. When I do the speed builds, I can listen to music or watch my favorite TV show at the same time and then edit all the sound out and then, you know, do my review at the end. I get to still keep a lot of my own time doing a live stream build. You know, you're giving up a significant amount of your day to doing that or at least a couple of hours. I'm like a very socially awkward person if that is not apparent through this already. So I'm just worried that it's just going to be like a really awkward sitting and staring and trying to build and no one's there. So I don't know, maybe I'll put out a poll and see how many people would say they're going to come to it and see from there if I think it's worth doing. I just feel like the market is really flooded and saturated with that kind of content already. And I don't think I've ever really said this before, but I see a lot of people kind of hate on people who are still doing Lego reviews in our current day and age. And when they say the market is already saturated with those as well, and I completely understand that. If I didn't do kind of the Lego speed builds and reviews, most of my sets would never get built. They would stay in storage tubs. And so I've used that as an opportunity to get to build them. And since I can't have a physical display, it's like having a digital display of my collections. That's one of the reasons I still do those even though there isn't a super huge need for them. Most of the time if you type in a set, no matter how old the set is, if you type it into YouTube, you can find several reviews of the set already. But I like having this kind of digital collection and portfolio where I can go through and see my collection instead of just looking around and seeing storage tubs, which is where they currently reside, which is kind of the same thing for Instagram as well. That's why I post all of my smaller sets go there and all of my larger sets go to YouTube. It's kind of like having an online display, which I really like to go back and look at. I do this stuff kind of as much for myself as I do it for other people. I know that was a little bit off topic of live streaming, but I thought while I was already around that, I'd go ahead and throw that tidbit of information in as well. This question comes from the legendary Brixar, and he asked when I'm going to sell the tipper truck. That was just like a really funny gag I thought to do. I've been watching his stuff for years now, and he's got the massive tipper truck army. So I actually had all of the parts for a tipper truck except for the tipper and I think I might have needed a set of the um the dually wheels as well. So I ordered those just to make that <laughs> just to make that video, which went over really well. I was really happy that people thought that was as funny as I did. I'm going to wait though until Brixar has every other tipper truck in the world and then, you know, I'll sell it to you for like the reasonable price of a million dollars, you know? <laughs> Oh man, no, I'm just kidding. I I think that's my oldest set now. I think I don't think I had anything before 1979 until I parted that one together. So I am really excited to have that little piece of Lego history in my collection. I do need to get one of the Tipper Truck Army t-shirts though to go with it. I'll probably do that in the near future. This question comes from 
Astro Bozo 3078. My question is, if you could have any piece in any color, what would you choose? You can have as many multiples of the pieces you would need to use it how you want. That's a really good question. I thought about that quite a bit. Part 2409 is one of my all-time favorite pieces. I don't know exactly what I would do with it, but getting that in really any color would be really cool. I was going through the colors it already exists in, and maybe like a translucent black or like translucent pink or something like that. I want that part back so bad. It was the coolest piece ever. It may actually be my favorite piece of all time. I don't really have a specific use for it, but that part in any color, even a solid color would be really cool. So that would be the part I would bring back and really any color I would be ecstatic to have it in. I just think it's an amazing piece with so many different functions. All right, I think I'll do one more. This question comes from Seam more Lego 5831. Is there a classic set you would love to own? I feel like I've probably answered this before, or at least just I know I've mentioned it many times on my channel, but I would love to have any of the monorails. The monorails were such a cool time in LEGO history. I know LEGO will never bring anything similar to that back. Every year they get more expensive, so that's like my ultimate bucket list set. I would take any of them. If I had my pick, I would pick the airport shuttle, but honestly, they're all amazing, so any of them would be fantastic. Definitely always trying to save for one of those, just not in the budget at present. So I would like to thank everyone again for your support. Every play, every share, every comment, you know, all of that helps. Every dime I make from YouTube goes to paying back my student loans, so I really appreciate anything and everything you all do to help this channel grow. I can't believe it's been three years. I've had an amazing time. I've now made hundreds of videos. I love the way this channel has gone. I am actually a huge fan of more of slow growth because I kind of get to know all of the people who subscribe and leave comments better that way. The larger you grow and the faster you do it, you tend to get more trolls and that kind of thing, the usual things you get on the internet. And I would say, you know, 99.9% .9 of the time, people have been really kind and had really awesome things to say. So I love getting to have that kind of community on here. And I can't wait to see where things go in the next year. Hopefully get to make tons of more awesome content that you all will hopefully all enjoy and just continue to get to have the best time living my dream life as a Lego content creator and Lego reseller. So thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I will probably do a part two of this at some point using the questions I got asked on Instagram since I wasn't able to get to those today. If you're interested in extra content and videos, check out the membership program starting at only 99 cents a month. See you all next time.